Hello everyone, welcome to Technocraft. This is the first video of the third module of the course CCNA Security 210-260. If you have not gone through the previous module, I highly recommend you to watch the previous modules before going through this video. I have added the links in the of the complete playlist in the descriptions below. In this module, we will cover NAT and access control for ASA 9X. Well, you know, we have been working with game on networks and we code the edge firewall with the basic configuration. And we want, want what we want to do now is allow their internal users to have access to the internet and external users to have access to servers. And they're going to be providing different value added services to whatever they're offering. And that's why they need that inbound access. And so that's where NAT and access control for the ASA is going to come into the picture. And so that's what we are going really do in the next section here. So we'll take a look at NAT and access control. We will introduce a couple of topics in this session. We are going to take first of all about NAT types and NAT deployment models. And we are going to get into static and dynamic NAT. We are going to talk about something called NAT overloading. And I will show you an example of how NAT overload is going to allow a whole bunch of internal users to get out to the in internet when you only really have one usable address that can be seen on the internet that is routable. The whole purpose of having NAT in the first place is so that we can use private IP addresses based on the inside and then we translate that to a publicly routable IP address on the outside of the firewall. And that's what we are going to do here. So, we'll talk terminology and get into some of the verbiage that is used with NAT that you are going to want to learn because as time goes by and you start talking to your peers, you're going to be throwing these terms around. You're going to want to understand what they are talking about and they of course need to be able to understand you when you try to convey a thought. And you want to use the proper terminology, terminology when you do that. We will also configure dynamic NAT, static NAT. We'll do a port address translation demo as well. And we will configure something called policy NAT. And then we'll talk about how we can verify NAT. We'll show you some of the commands there and we will actually do it. We will go in and we will verify that network address translation is happening and all of that configuration will just kind of jump in and we will start going down a checklist we got a dynamic NAT now let's verify it now we got a static NAT let's verify it and so on so on in addition to our network address translation we are going to want to configure access control especially for that inbound access but also for our outbound access we want to control what used what users are allowed to send out of the out of the network or what type of traffic are allowed to leave the network as well as what type of traffic is to come into the network we are going to hit on that also we will simplify our configuration with something called an object group. We will also introduce you to the modular, modular policy framework. Now, because we are talking about access control, the modular policy framework is going to give me a lot more granular capability in the way of controlling access. We can do all kinds of stuff with this traffic. We can inspect it. We can send it to an IPS module. IPS module or a firepower service module using the modular policy framework. If you wanted, we could look 
all the way up to layer 7 so we are going to see that in this section as well overview of NAT all right we'll get into a bit of an overview of network address translation first of all it's important to understand that NAT is defined in an RFC that RFC number is 1631 now the idea of NAT or the main reason that we use NAT is because in our network these days we use RFC 1918 addressing and that uses pri private IP address spaces then we use that to connect to the public internet but we need NAT to translate those private addresses to something that can be routed over the internet so that's why we use NAT. One of the main reasons that we use NAT, now there are a number of devices that can perform network address translation. If you go from your little home based routers for your Verizon Fios on your cable modem, they perform NAT because you provide your provider give you an IP address and then your internal machines are using private IP addresses spaces and then that spans all the way up into the enterprise class device their large-scale service provider NAT boxes and things along those lines now here we are going to be focusing on using the ASA for network address translation but before we get into the ASA functionality and how it is configured and the types of NAT that are used in the ASA. If you want to go into some of the Cisco terminology for network address translation. So the first term to be aware of is what's known as inside and local. Now the inside local address is that IPv4 address that is on a host inside your network. It's a real address that's on the machine usually it's going to be one of those RFC 1918 address then we have an inside global address now the inside global address is globally routable IPv4 address that represent an inside local address so whenever we translate a user they are translated from their inside local to an inside global the inside global is a public address that can be seen out there on the internet then we have outside local address the outside local address is just the address of a host on the outside as it appears to my inside local machines so whatever that address may be it may, may not be a public IP address but in most cases it's going to be a public IP address we also have an outside global address now this is address that is assigned to a host outside of my network by whoever owns that host so it could be their publicly routable address from the global address space and oftentimes when we do just standard NAT what we see is an outside local address and an outside global address in our NAT table that is the same because because to us on the inside of our network we don't see difference between that outside machines that we are talking to so outside local outside global will end up being the same so there are a number of other benefits to use network address translation other than just giving me connectivity to the internet using private address space one of one of the nice thing is that if we were to readdress my network i go to the service provider and i say you know when i'm not really happy with you i'm going to another provider and the new provider give me a new ip address will now I don't need to readdress all the hosts on the inside of my network. I simply reconfigure the outside network and my NAT statement. And all of a sudden, the inside users are making translation to the new address. And that's easy. And then also, because I don't have to have public address on each of those machines, it does conserve some address space. It was one of the methods that 
was used to kind of extend the life of IP version 4. Okay, so that's some of the terminologies. 